The isoelectric point of an amino acid or a protein is the pH value at which the net charge on that molecule is zero. Now, we already know how to calculate the isoelectric point of individual amino acids, but how do you calculate the isoelectric point, the pi value, of proteins that consist of two or more amino acids? Well, this is what we want to focus on in this lecture. We want to find out how to calculate the isoelectric point of proteins. Now, the general rule is to follow the following two steps. In step one, we basically want to guess. We want to estimate what the pH value is at which that protein would have a net charge of zero. And then in the next step, we want to use that estimated pH value. In the second step, we want to find the average of the two pK values right above and right below that estimated pH that we obtained in part one. Now, to actually see these two rules, these two steps in action, let's take a look at these two examples, beginning with example one. So find the PI value, the isoelectric point, of the tripeptide, aspartate, glycine, and glutamate. So let's begin by drawing our structure for this tripeptide. So on the left side, we have this amino acid, so we have our amino group, so we have H, 3N, and this is bound to the central carbon. The central carbon contains an H atom going into the board and the R group, the side chain coming out of the board. And, and for aspartate, we have the following side chain group. And then we finish off this amino acid with our carbonyl group. Now glycine, so glycine, has a very simple um, side chain, and the side chain of glycine is simply an H atom. So here we have an H atom, and we have an H atom. And now we finish off this glycine, and we move on to our glutamate. Glutamate has a very similar side chain to this first amino acid. So we have our H going to the board, and our side chain group coming out of the board, and the only difference here is it, it, is it has one more carbon group than in, in, than in that particular case. So we have, um, actually, let's draw it in a slightly different manner. Let's draw the resonance stabilized form. Okay, so and now we finish off this group by finishing off with the alpha terminal carboxyl group. Okay, so this is our tripeptide. Now, once we draw our tripeptide, we now have to find and label all those groups on our peptide that can readily lose or gain an H atom. And we have to write down their pKa values. So let's begin on our side. So on this side, we have this terminal amino group and it has a pKa value of 8. So 8.0. For this particular case, this group here, the pKa value is about 3.1. So we have, let's make this neater, 8.0, 3.1. And then we have to look at the side chain group. So for glycine, this cannot lose an H atom. So it doesn't have a pKa value, but these two groups can gain and lose an H atom. And it happens at a pKa value of around 4.1. So pKa for both of these is around 4.1. Now, once again, your textbook or your teacher might give you slightly different pKa values. And that's because under different conditions, for example, if the temperature is different, these pKa values will be slightly different. So that's okay because this method still works for those values as well. So we have a pK of 8, 4.1, 4.1, and 3. So let's begin by applying these rules. In rule number one, step number one, we estimate the pH at which the net charge on a protein would be zero. Now, at least, uh, at least in the beginning, before we gain intuition about how to solve these problems, we have to actually guess. So let's suppose our guess is pH of seven. Now, that guess might be wrong, and the only way to find out is to actually solve the problem. Let's suppose that our guess is a pH of seven. At a pH of seven, the charge will be zero. 
Okay, so at a pH of 7, what will be the charge on this group here? Well, because the pKa is 8 and it's above 7, our guess, that means this will have a positive charge. Right? Remember, this will only lose an H atom and become neutral at this pH or above. And because we're below, because our guess is a pH of 7, this will be a positive charge. Let's move on onto this one. So what this pK tells us is this group will lose an H atom at this pH or higher. And because we're at a pH of 7, that means this will have a negative charge. So we have a negative charge on this group. And the same thing is done with these two groups here. So because we're at 4.1, which is below 7, that means these will lose the H atom and so will have a negative charge, will exist in the form as shown on the board. And now all we have to do to find the net charge is we sum up all the charges. So we have a positive 1, negative 1, those cancel out, and then we have negative 1 and negative 1. So we see that the net charge on the protein is negative 2. And what that means is our estimate, our guess, was incorrect. At a pH of 7, this protein will have a charge of negative 2. Now, do we go up or do we go uh, 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 down. So basically, because we have a charge of negative 2, that means we want to decrease the amount of negative charge we have on our uh, protein. Now, if we go higher, if we go above 8, we will remove this positive charge and make our peptide more negative. So that means instead of going above 7, we have to go somewhere below 7 to basically remove some of that negative charge. And so to remove the negative charge, right, we have to remove two negative charges because our charge at 7 is negative 2. We have to go below a pH of 4.1 because below a pH of 4.1, these two groups will gain an H atom and so will neutralize themselves. So let's go below 4.1, let's say 3.5. So our second guess is a pH of, so we said pH of 7 does not work. Let's try pH of 3.5. Let's see if that works. So we basically continue with the same exact type of procedure. We write down our pluses and negatives. So at a pH of 3.5, this will be negative because this value is lower than this. So we have a negative here. We have a positive value here. And for these particular groups, we're going to have a neutral charge because this pH is below 4.1 and that means these will gain an H atom at a pH of below this. So we have a positive, a negative, and two neutral. And what that means is our net charge is in fact zero. So this is the correct guess, the correct estimate. And now we can move on to step two. Step two t uh, tells us to take this pH value and to find the pKa right above it, right below it, sum them up, divide them by two, and find the average. So the pKa value right above this pH is basically 4.1. The pKa uh, value right below it is 3.1. So we take 4.1 and 3.1, so we have 4.1, plus 3.1, divide that by 2, and that gives us, so we have 7.2 divided by 2, and that gives us 3.6. So this is our PI, the isoelectric point, for this particular tripeptide. So let's move on to example number 2. So once again, let's begin by drawing our peptide. In this case, we have four amino acids. So the first amino acid is cysteine. So we begin with our H amino group, H3N, then we have our central carbon, the H, and then we have our cysteine. The side chain in cysteine is this side chain shown here. Then we have our carbonyl group, and then we go on to the second amino acid. So the second amino acid in this particular case is 
is uh, glycine. So just like in that case, we have a simple H, and this finishes off the second amino acid. The third amino acid is glutamate or glutamic acid. So we have our side chain group, the same as in that particular case, right? We have CH2, CH2, then we have a C, and we have our group as shown here. Then we finish off this amino acid with our carbonyl group. And finally, we have lysine. So we have uh, lysine. Now, what does uh, the side chain of lysine look like? Well, it looks something like this. We essentially have four carbons in a row. And then at the bottom, we have this H, this amine group uh, that has a positive charge at a specific pH value. Now we finish it off with our terminal group. Okay, so the same exact procedure holds here. We have to begin by labeling all those groups and their respective pKa values. So let's begin on this end. Once again, this has a pKa value of 8.0. This has a pKa value of 3.1. This has a pKa value of uh, pKa of um, 10.8. This has a pKa value we saw from previous example of about 4.1. What else? Glycine has no pKa value and this, what is it, cysteine has a pKa value of um, 8.3. Okay, so we have this value, this value, this value, this value, and this value that we now have to consider. So once again, we have to begin with our guess. So as always, let's suppose our guess is a pH of seven. So we don't know if it's correct until we actually try. So at a pH of seven, what will be the charge on that um, molecule, right? Okay. So at a pH of seven, this one will have a positive charge because it only loses that H and becomes neutral at or above this pKa value. So what about this one? Well, this one will have a neutral charge because it will only lose that H and gain a negative charge at or above this pH value. This one has a lower pKa value, so it will be negative, so we have a negative charge coming from this side chain group. And in this particular case, where above, where below this 10.8 value, so this will have a positive charge. And then where at this particular location, so that means where uh, above it, so this will have a negative charge. Now, in this particular case, we see that if we add up these charges, two positive and two negative, they work out just fine. And at a pH of around seven, at the estimated pH of seven, we have a net neutral charge. Now we move on to step two. We find a pKa value above and below. So we have a pH of seven, and the one above it, directly above it is, so we have 8.3, 10.8, and eight. So this is the closest one to seven from above, and so that means we have to add 8.0, and the one right below seven is, well, we have 3.1 and 4.1. This is the one right below it, and so that means we add 8.1, and we add uh, 8 and 4.1, and divide that by two. So the numerator is 12.1, denominator is two, and this gives us 6.05. So we see that the isoelectric point, the PI value for this peptide that consists of four amino acids is 6.05. So we see that these are the two steps that basically give us a general, uh, a general rule of how to find the isoelectric point value of our proteins.